Beloved in the Lord, it's my singular pleasure to invoke the blessings of Christmas upon you. Have a fantastic Christmas and a blessed New Year. Christmas is a time of celebrations, enjoyment and excitement. And when it comes to that, that is not a time to talk about morality and good behavior. But for once this year, I am inspired to talk about the moral impact of the incarnation. That is the moral impact of the birth of Christ. Or if you like, the moral impact that the nativity narratives, the narratives surrounding the birth of Christ teach us. At the heart of the Christmas message is moral transformation as can be confirmed from this verse, which is my anchor text actually. Matthew chapter 1, verse 21. Matthew chapter 1, verse 21. She will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. So, she will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Christmas is about salvation from sin. At the heart of the Christmas message is moral redemption. And I keep saying that the moral miracle is the greatest miracle. I repeat, the moral miracle is the greatest miracle. So, Joseph received an angelic visitation giving you a background to the text we have just read and in that visitation the angel encouraged joseph to take mary although she was pregnant to be aware that the pregnancy was of divine origin and then he added that the child that will be born will be called jesus for he will save his people from their sins jesus is the greek translation of Joshua, which actually means Yahweh saves. Yahweh saves. And what does Yahweh save from? Yahweh saves from sin. Yahweh saves from moral corruption, which is actually the root cause of all human problems. So, as we celebrate Christmas this year, beloved in the Lord, let us focus on the key issues of morality that emerge from the nativity narrative. The key issues that emerge from the nativity narrative. All the characters demonstrate key ethical values, good moral behavior that we need to emulate. The first one, is Joseph. It is said of Joseph that because he was a righteous man, he did not want to expose Mary to disgrace. So when he realized that she was pregnant, she was going to put her off or end their relationship secretly so that she would not be disgraced. And this brings to mind the current concern we have for other people as we think about them and what happens to them. Some of us wish we could disgrace other people, disgrace our spouses, disgrace our children, disgrace people who are close to us. But Joseph, Joseph was a righteous man and he would not do that. Righteous people do not rejoice when somebody is miserable. Bible says, do not delight in your neighbor's day of shame. So don't pray that evil happens to anybody first message. The second one is Mary's humility. Mary was humble, very humble, from a very obscure origin. She rose, was selected by God to become the most famous woman of all generations. In her humility, it is said of her that she would always treasure everything that comes her way in her heart. Her self-control is amazing. She will not talk, she will not babble like 
some other women. She will keep the secret of God. She will reserve the revelation, ponder over it. And that is why she was chosen. May we learn the virtue of self-control and humility from Mary, even as we reflect on the nativity narrative this year. But of outstanding notice is the humility of God displayed in this narrative. The humility of God displays in this narrative. One, God chose to come as a human being and in that he, ch he could have chosen to come as a full-blown man but he came in the form of a baby entered the womb and was given birth to one through all the weaknesses a baby goes through to grow up and that is amazing beyond that let's look at the circumstances in which he was born he was born in a manger Nobody gives birth in a manger. Not even a mad person will do it. But Christ was selected to be born in a manger. Why? Because Christ is a lamb. And you don't give a lamb, you don't give birth to a lamb in a maternity ward. John said in John 1 29, This is the lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. So because he was a lamb, he was given birth to in a manger. The birth location was a manger to give us this sharp message of humility that the circumstances surrounding your birth does not actually matter. It is the grace of God upon your life that counts. He was born in a manger, but he rose up to become the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, supreme and sovereign in all creation. Humility. Do not despise humble beginnings. That's the first message. Second one, they chose to identify with us, identify with sinners, go through what we go through, experience our pain, experience our challenges, but without sin. He humbled himself to the extent of being killed on the cross, like a criminal. So he identified with every social strata, that is, people at every level of the social ladder right from the top with the famous and the successful to the bottom he identified with criminals condemned to death this is the humility of god profound message for us may god grant us grace this christmas as we reflect on the nativity may the moral impact the moral message not be wasted on us the key issue is to be saved from sin to be transformed from being sinners into saints let this be our focus and if we do, our churches will change, our communities will change, and our nation will change as the Church of Pentecost is out to possess the nations by transforming them with the values and principles of the kingdom. May God grant us grace and use us as instruments of transformation, hope, healing, deliverance, salvation. In the name of Jesus, once more, have a blessed Christmas and a very fruitful New Year. In Jesus' name, Amen.